The United States Energy Department has awarded two million hours of supercomputer processing time to scientists at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. The grant enables the researchers to simulate the inner workings of a nuclear fusion reactor, a potential power source for the future. Science and technology correspondent Patrick Regan reports. Building on 50 years of advances in what's called computational physics, scientists here can produce colorful, animated movies of phenomena no one can actually see. Now playing, turbulence within a hot gas of charged particles, a plasma trapped inside a donut-shaped magnetic field. These are not just conceptual illustrations. They're realistic experiments carried out by computer algorithms, software, and processors instead of massive, complex test reactors. Both kinds of experiments aim toward practical technology for getting trapped nuclear particles to fuse together and release energy, pretty much the way the sun does it. As computing power increases, simulations can incorporate more data and insights from past experiments and help to guide the design of new ones, like the test reactor taking shape here now, the National Compact Stellarator Experiment. What keeps a fusion energy project rolling is a looping interplay of engineering, physics, and computer science. This cycle then is accelerated uh, when you have superior tools. Access to an IBM Blue Gene P, the newest version of the top-ranked supercomputer in the world, could give a boost to the whole process, according to the lab's chief scientist, Bill Tang. We asked for two million hours for this fiscal year to try our simulations on, and if things go well, um, there's very good chance that we'll get four million next year, and the third year it would go up to ten million. To put ten million processor hours in perspective, if your PC or Mac could do these calculations, and it can't, it would take well over a thousand years. Computational physicist Stéphane Etier explains that they need this kind of power to track billions of individual particles at higher resolution and over longer time periods. It's very tricky and it, the, it becomes a lot more challenging as you go from you know, 16 processors to 32 to 1,000 to 10,000 processors. So you really have to you know, rethink the way you do your, your calculations. They say the bottom line of these calculations should be understanding not just what makes a fusion reactor work more efficiently, but why it does. Patrick Regan, NJN News, Plainsboro.